Now, before we get into today's episode, I just wanna very quickly put this in the front because today's episode is gonna be one hell of a ride. So if after this you need a break or just something a little cuter to look at, maybe check out my puppy's channel. If you type in Casper the Friendly Floof on YouTube or just go to the link in the description box, you'll be linked to a cute little Samoyed puppy. He's about one year old now and he's just doing all sorts of cute, happy things as a really good form of eye bleach after today's episode. So if you need it, much like like I needed to give him many, 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 many pets after this, then feel free to head on over there after today's episode. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket, a semi-weekly series where bad businesses go to die. We will discuss any and everything from bad charities, terrible CEOs, and people that have a lot to hide. I'm the Illuminati, and today is probably gonna be one of my favorite corporate caskets to date, because today we're going to sit down and talk with a current employee of OAN, or One America News Network, the far-right news channel that has been called Trump's favorite news channel. For this individual's protection, I will be calling this employee John. Now, John emailed me telling me about his job, and after my researcher Ali obtained proof that in fact, yes, he does really work there, we went ahead and interviewed John. So today you'll be hearing some pieces from that interview between Allie and John, though we will also be distorting John's voice for his own protection as well. Also, I want to put this right at the front of the episode that there will be a link at the top of my sources and within it are going to be some of the evidence used in this series of episodes, as well as the full audio conversation between Allie and John. That way, you as a listener will be able to know that nothing was taken out of context if you choose to pursue the entire audio yourself as well. But for brevity's sake, I will be breaking it up into pieces. I would also like to put the disclaimer out there that Ali and I are not, nor have we ever claimed to be, professional journalists. So please don't take this as your only source of information, but instead see it as any other corporate casket episode with an employee's perspective added in. And as a content warning, we will be discussing COVID, the insurrection, BLM, and things of that nature within these episodes. So please be aware of that. As excited as I am to share with you what John has to say, first, we obviously need to provide some context. What is OAN? Has it always been known for spreading conspiracy theories? Well, let's talk about the history of the company before we get to John. Let's get into it. OAN begins with Herring Networks and Herring Networks begins with Robert Herring. Since selling his family business, Herco Technology in 2000 for $122 million, Herring had millions to throw around and do whatever he wanted. In his golden years, Herring decided to start his television network. Some of my sources claim that Herring Networks began in 2003, though most tend to say 2004. Herring Broadcasting is something of a family business. His son, Charles, is the company president and seems to take care of the company's day-to-day operations according to the Washington Post. In 2004, he launched Wealth TV, a cable channel now known as AWE, a wealth of entertainment, featuring shows such as Dream Cruises, Private Islands, and Marijuana Miracle Cure. Charles Herring called Wealth TV a vicarious living channel and the bulk of its fare focuses on luxury travel. But Robert Herring also used his channel as something of a soapbox. In 2004, Wealth TV ran a two hour special on the right to die case of Terry Schiavo, a Florida woman who had spent half her life in a vegetative state. On the show, Herring offered $1 million to Schiavo's husband if he would halt his effort to remove her from life support. She died in 2005 after her feeding tube was removed. Wealth TV has also had their share of controversies. In 2007 and 2008, they even filed carriage access complaints at the FCC against the IN demand owners, namely Comcast, Time Warner, Bright House, and Cox Communications. According to Herring, he claims that these companies favor their own program and treat affiliated networks like siblings. He claimed, the reality is that everyone in the cable industry, especially MVPDs and independent programmers, recognize that there isn't a viable path for relief via the carriage access regulations. Thus, the deterrent to prevent discriminatory behavior is lost, along with the carriage access compliant process being broken. So to put it simply, Herring felt his shows were not receiving fair treatment. I think I would be a bit more sympathetic to this if his shows were a bit more reputable. As it stands, I can't entirely blame networks for not wanting to air the content. No matter what you believe about life support, 
getting involved in such a personal decision feels morally scummy, at least to me. Wealth TV, now known as AWE or a wealth of entertainment, isn't so much a news source as they are a lifestyle and entertainment channel though. It's when Herring began getting into politics that OAN truly began to actually unfold. OAN, One America News, started off as a partnership with another right-leaning news source, The Washington Times. And that's not to be confused with The Washington Post. They reported in 2013 that, Herring Broadcasting, the owners of the Wealth TV Network and the Washington Times announced Thursday a partnership to create a new national cable news network called One America News that will debut nationwide this summer. One America News Network will provide Americans a new credible source for national and international news and investigative reporting, as well as talk shows designed to foster an independent, cutting edge debate about the policies, issues, and solutions facing the country, said Robert Herring. The network, which is wholly owned by Herring Broadcasting, will rely on the Washington Times as a key source of news and analysis from the nation's capital and is building a state-of-the-art TV studio inside the 31-year-old newspaper's newsroom. The Times is an authoritative voice on policy, politics, and national security news in Washington, and it provides our network a powerful reporting and analytical capability to help our viewers make sense of developments in an increasingly complex and polarized capital city. We're excited to have reporters, editors, and commentators from Ralph Hollow to Emily Miller, who can whisk into the studio from the Times newsroom and provide real-time trusted reporting and credible analysis on the pressing issues of the day. Before even going on air, pairing with the Washington Times was their first mistake, or in their case, probably their first success. For example, no matter what political stance you have, I think we can all agree secondhand smoke is harmful, right? Well, not to the Washington Times, Back in the late 90s, one of the writers, Fred Singer, condemned the Environmental Protection Agency for distorting data when they said that secondhand smoke was harmful. They've denied climate change, called the pursuit of zero cancer risk in foods wasteful, and manipulated stories that they don't seem to like. For example, in the late 90s when Al Gore was campaigning, the Washington Times ran a story that local authorities had paid $7 million to raise the water level of a river that Al Gore was canoeing on he announced big grants designed to protect rivers at the end of said canoe ride. So for them to imply that he was a supposed friend of the environment, but wasted water resources to stage a political event was really harmful. Other news sources even picked it up, such as CNN, the New York Post, and the New York Times. As it turned out, the Washington Times was misleading everyone. After further investigation, the local utility company that owned the dam already planned to release the water, as it habitually does. Rather than being wasted, the water passed through hydroelectric turbines and generated power that was sold to other utility companies. And the amount of water released was not 4 billion gallons, but perhaps 500 million, a fact that the Times didn't correct until a week after the original story, long after other media outlets had taken floodgate and run with it. The reason why I use these examples is because they aren't, or at least shouldn't, be political in nature. Secondhand smoke causes thousands of lung cancer deaths in the US among non-smokers every year. That's a plain and simple fact. It's not distorting or twisting the truth, but the Washington Times has downright lied to their readers in some cases. In 2001 and 2002, they dedicated 10 articles, two editorials, and an opinion piece to what sounded like an egregious case of biofraud. Reporter Audrey Hudson wrote that government wildlife regulators had planted fake lynx hair in states where there were no lynx, hoping to create new critical habitats that would close national forests to human visitors. It turns out that Hudson had botched the story. No fur had been planted, and even if it had been, no forests would have been closed without further investigation. No matter, the lynxgate myth spread rapidly, picked up by the Associated Press and repeated in papers like the Wall Street Journal, Rocky Mountain News, and Seattle Times. Magazines like the conservative Weekly Standard and the US News and World Report cited the Times series as an example of how government scientists manipulate data to serve their political ends. It was a month before the Washington Times got around to quoting biologists who disputed Hudson's baseless charges. Once the story had been thoroughly debunked elsewhere, the Times refused to correct the facts. Needless to say, the fact that this is where OAN wanted to get their information, well, it's no wonder they aren't exactly a respected source. But now that we've got some context and we know the history of how OAN generally began, let's get into them as a company and meet our guest of honor for the day, John. (music) 
Because this was recorded over the phone, I apologize if John's audio quality isn't the best, but we will still have a transcription playing on the YouTube channel, so you can follow along with that if you prefer. For our audio listeners, I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to listen. So to start with, before even getting into the misinformation and conspiracies, we wanted to get a feel for the work environment and who John is and who works for OAN. So yeah, why don't you just tell me a little bit about what got you into, you know, this news network in the first place, uh, how long you've been there, just some background? Yeah, um, I've been there for a few years and it was originally um, just because it was a job. I mean, California's expensive to live in uh, and granted it's not a high paying job by any stretch of the imagination, but it, I mean, for all of their faults and there are many, they're at least paying like entry 15, 14 an hour. Gotcha. So it was just like, oh, hey, this is a company that's willing to pay me somewhat fairly for my, uh, my labor. Gotcha. So uh, when did you start working with them? Um, I started working with them 2018, I believe it was. Okay, so let's see. OAN's been around since 2013, so five years after they started and, you know, a few years ago. Uh, so what, I guess, what is your day-to-day there? What's your day-to-day with OAN? Uh, do they treat you well? Are you working from home? Uh, do you interact with other employees a lot? Can you go through what an average day might be like? Sure. Um, well, no, we're not working from home. And that's a, <laughs> yep. that's a, an issue of uh, controversy in and of itself. Basically, the, um, and it, it was, don't get me wrong, it was uh, floated like, hey, maybe we shouldn't be working in the, uh, you know, in, in the middle of a pandemic, maybe we shouldn't all be going into the same office and do a giant fishbowl. Yeah, um, no kidding. And, um, but that idea was shot down uh, because, and I'm basically quoting, uh, the guy that runs the place doesn't trust us. Doesn't trust you? Uh, us being his employees. Yeah, but like doesn't trust you to work from home? Yeah, uh, I believe his exact words were, nothing's going to get done. Uh. Like that's... He doesn't, uh, he doesn't believe that we'll actually honestly work from home, despite the fact that, I mean, it's pretty obvious when work is and is not getting done. Uh, but it was something that wasn't even being really considered because, uh, the, we call him Mr. H. Uh, he refuses to be called Mr. Herring or, um, Robert, uh, so we have to call Mr. H. Mr. H uh, is a firm believer in like super old school. Like, if you're not working literally every second that you're at work, then uh, you might as well not work here. And here we're going to continue onto the next clip about Mr. H. Uh, when it comes to One American News, uh, so you mentioned Mr. Herring, who prefers Mr. H. So uh, you've interacted not with prefers, him. It, it, it demands. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Demands, Mr. H. Uh, so have you interacted with him directly? And what have those interactions been like? Um, very infrequently. It's typically uh, when he's addressing everybody, then he'll, you know, he'll, he'll grace everybody with his presence. But mm-hmm. grace aside everybody. from that, um, if it's just, you know, basic, like, day-to-day stuff, uh, he's usually in his office. Allie and John briefly discussed some of the more common bits of misinformation spread by OAN, such as vaccine misinformation. But to keep things in order, we're going to play a clip in which they talked about the office staff and writers. Again, if you want to hear the full audio with Allie's office chair squeaking and all, that will be a link in my sources for complete and utter transparency's sake so you know that this is not taken out of context. So back to the conversation. Saying, like genuinely believe it, do these writers believe the lies that they're telling people or is it kind of a, there, we know it might not be true? There are writers that, you know, they just do the job they do because they're told to do it. And it's, you know, it's just like, oh, well, you know, this is a, this is a job, so I gotta do what the job says. But um, most of the writers, believe it or not, are, uh, left-leaning or, you know, just somewhere on the left. It goes, it goes as far as people who uh, 
not believe Trump or like the Antichrist to people who are kind of apolitical but left wing. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kirsten is not one of those people. He absolutely 100% believes everything that he writes. Wow, that's really surprising. It's scary to me. And just to briefly interject and mention who Pearson Sharp is, he's very far right and has consistently spread anti-vax and voter fraud material. But we'll discuss those stories in just a moment though. Back to the interview. That's surprising though to hear that some don't even believe what they're writing. That's Oh yeah, that's no, really it's, interesting. It, it's um, I would say probably about 70% of the writers are uh, left-leaning. A lot of the people who work there just kind of go there because it is a yeah, it's like, oh, hey, I just got out of college. I need something to show that, like, hey, I can work. I, you know, it, 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 it's kind of like, it, it's just building a resume effectively to be like, hey, look, you know, I can put up with this bullshit for a year. Uh, that means that I can put up with anyone's bullshit for a year. Yeah, yeah. it's just a job that pays kind of thing. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, it, come on, it's California. San Diego, California. You know, it's a liberal city and a liberal state. Of course, most of the people there are not going to be conservative. Granted, we do get people there that are hardline conservative and alt-right even, like Pearson, like Dan Ball, um, like Graham Ledger. You know Graham Ledger was fired a little while ago. But um, yeah, uh, it's it's mostly liberal people that work there. And it's funny too, because uh, Mr. H hates it when people are reminded that OAN is in San Diego, California. Whenever there's a local store, we don't reference, like, oh, here in San Diego, it's always there. In San Diego, despite the fact that you're there, because he doesn't want the audience to be reminded, oh, hey, this is in one of the most liberal states in the country. Now, before we continue on, I want to confirm a few things John said. Just because he works there doesn't mean I want to take John 100% at his word, as having others corroborate his experience is important to me, and I'd hope important to you as well. So. Does OAN mostly just consist of liberal employees trying to make a name for themselves that they're just trying to do what they're ordered to do? Well, it certainly seems that way. The Washington Post reported in 2017 that most One America employees are young and inexperienced and they worked for low pay. And they stated, quote, four OAN writers and producers said they were paid as little as $12 an hour or $25,000 a year and three anchors said they were paid as little as $52,000, well below the scale at national networks, though more in line with what's paid at local TV news operations in smaller markets. When I started, I was making less than I did when I was 15 in a summer job, said one former anchor, but the experience was invaluable, at least until the owner started massaging the news. John claimed that his rate was $14 to $15 for entry level, so it does seem that there's been a pay increase as John started in 2018, and this article came out in 2017, and it primarily interviewed ex-employees, so the starting pay was a bit lower. Otherwise, this pretty fairly corroborates John's story. As for how many believe that they're writing, when the New York Times posted in April, 2021, they claimed to have interviewed 18 current and former OAN newsroom employees. 16 of them said that OAN had broadcast reports they considered misleading, inaccurate, or untrue. Yet again, this aligns with the idea that a vast majority of the people working for, or that once worked for OAN, don't even agree with what they're writing or broadcasting. Quite frankly, I can't decide which is more frightening. The idea of a news organization full of far right-wing people or an organization that only has far right-wing people at the top, but the vast number of employees just will write anything because they need the pay and experience. Also, before anyone here states that they would never work or write for OAN no matter the money, please remember that some of these writers may be struggling in this large and expensive city, and I don't think it's our place to judge. Not to mention, John later references in the interview that some of them may feel that they're only there to make the place as bearable as it can be, perhaps bring some reasoning and sense to OAN before moving on. As for Mr. H, Christopher Wood, one of the channel's first writers has even called OAN as nothing more than Robert Herring's hobby and his way to quote, hobnob with political figures and maybe have some political influence, end quote. And what an incredibly dangerous hobby this has become given the influence OAN has had over politics. On this note, John also sent an email after the interview to add a couple points and he wrote, there are some things I remembered that I felt you may want to include, Every so often, writers are forced to take on an H story. These are stories that one of the herrings want to be aired, typically regarding something they saw online. There's no oversight to them, and if an H story is on the rundown, it has to get aired. 
This can be as benign as some stock rising or falling or as misleading as claiming that Mike Lindell found overwhelming evidence of fraud in the Maricopa County audit. More often than not, there's stories that praise Republicans and denounce Democrats. Mr. H is Trump's biggest fan. He keeps up with every bit of Trump news that exists and shouts out whatever Trump gives OAN kudos via an email blast congratulating the whole company. It goes a little further. During his team, whenever Trump found himself near San Diego to do press in front of the border wall, the entire place would get deep cleaned just in case Trump made a surprise visit to his favorite station. He never did. There was even a point in time where Trump didn't praise us, only saying he liked our CGs, and that caused Mr. H to get upset. Now, we're going to dive deeper into the Trump obsession from Mr. H, but once again, this corroborates what Wood says about OAN being nothing more than Mr. H's hobby, a Trump-obsessed, dangerous hobby. Now, before we continue on to talk a little bit about their news stories and how OAN apparently does their reporting, let's just take a quick break to thank today's sponsors. No matter the season, I'm juggling a lot at any given time. And unfortunately, that can mean some basic things like eating well can fall off my radar. And that's why I've switched up my game with Daily Harvest. You guys know them, love them. I've talked about them a lot previously. And they are honestly some of the best like self-care snacks that I've ever had. And incorporating them into my life has really been easy and delicious. Daily Harvest delivers nutritious harvest bowls, flatbread, smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. And Daily Harvest takes just minutes to prepare. There's no preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And it's delicious foods built on whole organic fruits and vegetables that conveniently stays fresh in your freezer so it's ready when you need it. So get more time back to do you and take care of yourself this fall and winter. Make sure to go to dailyharvest.com slash casket and get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash casket for up to $40 off your first box. dailyharvest.com slash casket. This episode is also sponsored by Athena Club, the creator of Dolphin Legs. That's not their slogan, but that's mine for them. Now, as you probably know, I don't exactly relish in the process of shaving my legs. It takes extra time. I cut myself all around my knees, like all the time. And not only that, but the razors are expensive. I need a razor that makes shaving uncomplicated. It's gentle on the skin. And that's why my Athena Club razor is hands down the best razor I've used. Athena Club's razor has built-in skin guards and the razor blade is surrounded surrounded by a water activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid. Plus the razor kit is only nine bucks and it comes with an extra blade head and a magnetic hook for storage that sticks right on your wall. And not to mention, I know it's superficial, but I love the colors that they have. They're all very muted palettes, very friendly, very appeasing to the eye and very like, I don't know, I don't wanna say like feng shui, that sounds like really tacky, but it looks really good in my shower. Just nice, muted, neutral-ish kind of colors that just complement my space. So show your skin that you care with your Athena Club razor kit. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code casket. That's athenaclub.com with promo code casket for 20% off. Now that we've got a bit of background and a little bit of a feel as to who works for OAN, let's get into what it is that they do. OAN's well-known shows are Real America with Dan Ball, In Focus with Stefani Hamill, and Tipping Point with Kara McKinney, The Real Story with Natalie Harp, After Hours with Alex Salvi, and Weekly Briefing with Christina Bob. And After Hours is apparently no longer super current and that was essentially replaced by Real Story and Real America. Back in 2014, around the time of their official launch, they also had a show called On Point with Tommy Lahren, a name I'm sure many of you are probably familiar with. Many of her clips went viral, including giving a face and voice to a new news station. Soon enough, OAN had plenty of content in 2016 when Trump was running for office and their conspiracies became especially prominent. According to the Washington Post, they were the first to carry Trump's campaign speeches live and in full, a decision followed quickly by the owner's directive that other candidates' rallies not be given the same treatment, according to internal emails. The Washington Post refers to OAN being a tiny father and son's operation that promoted itself as the antidote to the big three cable news networks. We're a no fluff, very fast paced live news service meant to inform, says Charles Herring, Robert's son and president of Herring Broadcasting, which owns One America. News anchors are not allowed to express opinions. They simply deliver the news and we leave it up to the viewers to decide. It's not our family's mission to determine the news. Yet former employees don't actually agree with that statement. Christopher Wood has stated that, 
we'd have staff meetings on Wednesdays and Mr. H would say he wanted more stories from Breitbart, The Drudge Report, and other conservative sites. It was his way or no way. So is this true? And if so, just how far will Herring go and push his narrative? Ali asked John this question and here's what he had to say. When it comes to your job, since you do the video editing for them, I'm assuming that they've told you to compile the clips in a certain way. Have you ever been instructed to take out certain things that may not fit the narrative that they're looking for? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Frequently, even. They will tell the tell, uh, editors to, I mean, how should I phrase this? We get a lot of viewer email that says, you know, stuff of the nature, like, I imagine stuff that you probably get emailed about, like, oh, hey, you were, you were talking about this, and you showed inaccurate footage. We do get that from time to time, but typically if it's correction, it's about military equipment, because most of the people that watch OAN are like 50-year-old boomers that love the military, and it's like, you were talking about F-16s, and that is not F-16, that is something that's a completely different playing the same year, you know, it's like yeah. those kind of corrections, but we also get uh, people who will send in your emails being like, uh, your show, uh, one of my favorites, um, was someone who said that, like, in a story, we used a, an unflattering photo of Donald Trump. And, um, I mean, I imagine you guys probably have a subscription to Getty or Video Blocks. I've definitely seen a few Video yeah. Blocks uh, pieces of footage on the channel. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, we, we got this email saying, like, oh, you, uh, you showed an unflattering photo of Trump, and then it just went on to this crazy rant about how it is a, uh, a psyop operation by the fake news media to show unflattering photos of Trump so that way people will vote against him. And afterwards it was like, you can only use a few select photos of Trump and some uh, basically any footage of him during like Trump rallies and stuff. He was, it's like, stay away from like these photos that make him look like he's weak or that make him look unflattering. Similarly, uh, going back to vaccines, uh, we recently were told to no longer show videos of people getting the vaccine because uh, we got too many complaints from our viewers because we keep posting so much anti-vax news. They're like, I don't want to see anyone get the death vaccine. You need to stop showing footage. So we had to work around that by not showing photos of people getting vaccines instead of showing like the vaccines themselves rolling off the uh, um, you know, the, the conveyor belts that they, basically a lot of footage that AT and Reuters provides, uh, but we can't show people getting the getting the poke. Wow. Okay. So no, no photos of Trump in an unflattering light, and no videos of people getting the vaccine. Okay. Uh, yeah. When it comes, we can't show photos of any Republican uh, congressman or senator uh, that looks like they're too angry or that looks like they're um, weak, essentially. Yeah, like we're only allowed to use flattering photos of conservatives and we're encouraged to use unflattering photos of Democrats. Encouraged because, you know, sometimes you gotta work with what you have, but if there is an unflattering photo, they usually hop on it like, oh, use this one. Yeah, that definitely sounds manipulative. Uh, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely, trying to keep my biases in check here. Uh, when it when it comes to video footage of, let's say Clinton though, I'm sure, ha has there ever been a case where you're splicing up footage of uh, someone that may be left leaning or just someone that's saying anything that basically opposes Trump? Uh, have you ever been encouraged to splice up actual video footage and actual language coming from a Democrat or an opposing figure to make it sound as if they're saying something that they're not? Has there ever been anything to that extent? There has been attempts. Um, there is a hard line in the sand that uh, the editors like will catch, will, <clears throat> sorry, will catch, where it is um, uh, specifically, uh, there's a writer in particular uh, does a lot of the propaganda type stories. His name's Christian Rose. His name's probably come up through research station and we got sued because of him. Or rather, we uh, sued Rachel Maddow because she was talking, talking shit and uh, he uh, 
we sued, but then they won the case because uh, language or something. But Christian Rose is one of the people that will frequently try to, uh, rather, when, he, when he, he's no longer allowed to do packages, I don't know if it's the reason, but uh, he would frequently try to have us spice clips in a way that would make someone sound incriminating. Um, okay, so before, example, uh, yeah, so before the lawsuit, there may have been more attempts, but now after the lawsuit, you guys have to be more careful? I'm not sure if it was after that lawsuit or if it was a different lawsuit. We've been sued a lot. Now, once again, let me pause here to address what John has said, clarify and confirm a few things. A news package is a self-contained news report. Typically, a news anchor reads an introductive live, then a pre-recorded story is shown. They can run for about a minute or two in length. It's possible for news organizations to license these packages through distribution deals, and that'll be important in just a moment. Before we discuss that, let's touch upon that Rachel Maddow lawsuit that John discussed. Rachel Maddow is the host of The Rachel Maddow Show on MSNBC. Herring Networks, the parent company of OAN, said that Maddow has defamed the company back in July, 2019. She called OAN paid Russian propaganda when she was discussing a Daily Beast article that reported how an OAN contributor was also on the payroll of Sputnik, a Kremlin-backed news site. That Daily Beast article discussed Christian Rose, who John mentioned and stated he is, quote, originally from the Siberian city of Novosibirsk and has been living in San Diego, where OAN is based since August, 2017, reporting on US politics for the 24 hour news channel. For all of that time, he's been simultaneously writing for Sputnik, a Kremlin owned newswire that played a role in Russia's 2016 election interference operation, according to an assessment by the US intelligence community. Rose's on-air report for OAN included a wholly fabricated 2017 segment claiming Hillary Clinton was secretly bankrolling Antifa through her political action committee. Clinton, Rose claimed falsely, gave Antifa protesters $800,000 that went toward things like bricks, hammers, bats, and chains, end quote. OAN, of course, didn't disclose that Rose worked for Russia's state-owned media in all of his segments, which led Maddow to make the comment. However, about a year after OAN sued for $10 million, the case was dismissed as a judge ruled her statement a matter of opinion. Therefore, it's protected by the First Amendment. Now, I can't confirm exactly what Rose instructed video editors like John to do, but I can corroborate that yes, Rose has consistently been notorious for what John claimed he did in the past, the splicing up clips thing. One 2020 article from Mother Jones not only talked about the entirely false 2017 Clinton segment, but a segment in which Rose referred to police brutality as so-called and a false flag provocation. Rose is also for painting false narratives, so while this does not surprise me, it's still alarming and frankly upsetting. Now back to packages. As we said, news organizations can license packages, the New York Times offers it, Bloomberg offers it, and you can see how to find licensing and package deals with them under distribution or partner programs on their sites. OAN is no different. As a smaller news organization, it makes sense for them to buy these packages. We know that they do in fact use this B-roll because once again, another source can also confirm this. As Washington Post writes, Herring, long-term active donor to political campaigns, had no journalism experience. The channel he created is a rapid fire cavalcade of headlines. Most stories run well under a minute. Almost all of the reports are read by the anchors over video footage provided by Reuters, Associated Press, and Euronews services, as well as by RT, the Kremlin funded news outlet that a US intelligence report calls Russia's state run propaganda machine. Once again, their ties to Russia are noteworthy to many of my sources. It makes sense that so much of their footage is not their own, especially if they're a much smaller organization with only four correspondents in 2017. However, it's what John told Ali that they do to these packages that is, as he puts it, despicable. So another thing I actually wanted to bring up because I don't see this being reported on um, is, uh, is that I think I might, I don't want to assume your knowledge of the uh, news stations are not totally sure how well it works or other stations. Yeah. But, um, you know, we'll have uh, packages from lawyers in AP uh, coming. And you'll see occasionally, unlike other news stations, NBC, CBS, they'll be, you know, talking up a storm and they'll be like, we go on more with uh, Jack Smith on that. And then you'll cut to a story from Jack Smith and then at the end of the story, you, you won't, you'll never see the person talking, but at the end of the story, you'll just hear Jack Smith, the Associated Press, or Jack Smith, Reuters TV. And like, it'll end it there. That's 
what's just referred to as a package. Mm -hmm. No, oh wait, for some reason, they call it outhouse packages because there's in-house packages, meaning uh, they're made in-house. Outhouse packages being someone else produced it. So it's pretty common for companies to, uh, you know, buy a lawyer's review subscription, which gives them the license to use uh, packages created by those companies. But what OAN does, which is pretty despicable, is OAN modifies those packages so they're more friendly or favorable to certain politicians or companies. Specifically, um, one of the things OAN does is uh, Biden is not allowed to be referred to as the president. Yeah. Um, none of none of OAN's packages will ever refer to or any coverage will ever refer to Biden as President Biden. It is Joe Biden or it is nothing. Um, wow. Okay. And the reverse is true with Trump. It is only President Trump. We can't say uh, uh, Trump. We can't say Donald Trump. We are saying President Trump. Even now? And even when is, he's not the president? Even now. Even now. Okay. Especially now. He is Trump's the president. Uh, okay. He, he won the election, so yeah. Uh, what about former president? <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. What no, about no, no, former no. president? No, no, not former president. He, okay. he is the president. Okay. So it's it's President Trump, and that's yeah. Um, so we do that on our packages, and that's one thing we do with some stuff. That's whatever. But yeah. the other will go into uh, other packages that uh, AT and British produce, and they'll have the editors remove, uh, as we say, President Biden cut out uh that's what i actually have some clips of that <laughs> so, yeah. yeah if um, you don't mind sending those clips that would actually yeah. be really great now john actually did send over these clips here's a report where you'll notice about 18 seconds in the narrator's voice seems to cut off before saying biden out afghanistan in the weeks since joe biden since joe biden announced in the original the clip clearly states president biden Violence has been raging throughout Afghanistan in the weeks since President Joe Biden announced. The same thing happens about 24 seconds into another clip calling President Biden Biden when the original uses the whole title. John also sent me a screenshot where an editor was clearly asked to remove the word president when discussing President Biden from one of these packages. So let's get back to the interview and continue where we left off. Uh, but yeah, they'll have it so like, you know, oh, uh, editors cut out uh, President Biden, um, cut out anything more climate change, uh, cut out uh, anything negative about Tesla because they just don't like Teslas. Uh, so they don't like anything bad that we talk about. They don't also Tesla, so I'm not allowed to share that coverage for that. But um, yes, yeah, so they do that with the uh, outhouse practice, which is pretty gross. Um, though one of the other things you'll notice on OEM's coverage is uh, anything that OEM doesn't like but kind of is obligated to report on because it's necessary um, is so called. Uh, the so-called Green New Deal, uh, so-called climate change, um, so-called global warming, uh, the so-called so climate change. change. If it is negative to all the things that is important happening, it is so-called. Yeah, and even if, even if that's not illegal, you know, they're not doing anything illegal but calling it so-called yeah it, it is it is very manipulative language because so-called implies that it's a rumor when yeah, exactly. when global warming is is not a is not a rumor climate change is not a rumor now for a moment john was just a bit too far from the mic so after this in the full audio you'll hear him discuss how oan reported that this misinformation was also used when discussing so-called climate change causing california wildfires after a moment, Ali asked John to come a bit closer into the phone mic, and here's where you hear the rest of that clip. We're not allowed to show footage of people just sort of existing. We have to only show footage if it's BLM or Tantiva. We can only show footage of uh, violence. If it's the Capitol riot, we are not allowed to show footage of them hurting cops or chanting, hang my pants, doing any of that stuff. That goes against the narrative. Yeah. We're not allowed to show that, period. Yeah. I I know that I'm not, by no means do I think that I'm perfect on reporting stories at all, but I think that if you don't try to tell both sides, if you don't try to find context, if you don't at least put effort in to tell the full truth, then what are you doing? You know, and, and the fact that OAN actively does not want 
to even attempt to tell the full truth of a situation. I mean, yeah, it just, it kind of affirms what I've thought about them, but it's, it's made all the worse when, when you real, when you hear it, <laughs> you know, when you hear it from, from an employee's mouth, it makes it all the worse for sure. Yeah, I think it's definitely a case of the ends just try to meet on the, uh, the higher ups. I think that their opinion is like, oh, the, the lids are doing this already, so the we lids. might as well <laughs> do it as well. Yeah. It becomes a self fulfilling prophecy because it gets to the point where you just assume the worst of the other side, so it justifies anything that you do in retaliation. I think that's the entire philosophy of OAN. Now, I understand that was probably a lot to take in. We are going to talk more specifically about OAN as a company, how they treat people, what news they're talking about now, and how they've discussed news in the past. Before getting there though, I feel that this company philosophy was kind of important to go over. On the surface, this minor edit may not seem like a big deal. Simply removing the word president from President Biden and insisting they refer to Trump as only President Trump. However, when it gets into science denial, climate change, and the environment, well, not only is OAN subtly using language as a manipulating factor, but now they're refusing to report a universal truth. These topics need to be discussed and sticking our heads in the sand and pretending they don't exist is really no way of solving anything. And again, how scummy is it that they're doing this to other companies' news footage? And this isn't to say that no other news sources have ever subtly manipulated language or footage to suit their narrative. Simply that OAN is not only doing this, but even giving downright false statistics and information along with it. One writer from Business Insider claims to have watched OAN consistently for a week and among their findings, they show a daily graphic ticking away astronomically high figures related to the alleged cost of undocumented immigrants. This giant, bold red graphic may look intimidating, yet the information on it isn't even correct. They say there are over 26 million illegal aliens in the US and cite the Department of Homeland Security as a source. Yet by DHS's own estimates, there are about 12 million or less. So even if this data fluctuates, I haven't seen anything close to 26 million. This article also read, the more subtle signs of bias in the news blocks that I noticed match some former employees' accounts of the ways the network's non-opinion programming lent itself to personal politics of OAN president and the son of the network's founder, Charles Herring. This matched up with previously reported accounts from former employees who described a newsroom that was closely controlled by Herring. We started out with the premise of news straight down the middle, Cassie Lufin, an anchor at OAN from 2013 through the 2016 election told the Washington Post. But the bias does reveal itself in the story selection. The owner really felt this was what was needed. He saw the popularity of Trump before almost anybody and Trump became our bread and butter. Personally, I've never seen the middle ground revealed in their stories, even the earlier ones. Since John started working there around 2018, he can't really vouch for their 2013 work either, but former OAN employees have confirmed what John stated though, especially when it comes to not being allowed to say certain things. Chris Pocock, a former OAN producer, stated on Political that, quote, we were told to avoid stories slamming Russia because H's wife was from Russia, stories about unarmed black people being killed by police, and negative stories about Trump or Tesla because Mr. H owns stock and several Tesla cars, end quote. It's almost impossible to go into a story with no bias whatsoever. We try to do that here, but it is a difficult thing to do. But as stated, the fact that these days OAN makes no attempt to do so, at least seemingly, yeah, that says a lot about them as a source. I'm sure many of you know that they weren't exactly reputable to begin with, but for any of you that didn't know or didn't understand why, well, I think here's at least the beginning of an answer. And so with that being said, that's where we're going to end part one of this three-part series. With this background information of who OAN is and their company philosophy, we'll go into part two soon and talk about how they handled COVID, the Capitol insurrection, and vaccine misinformation. So thank you all for sticking around with today's episode. I know this is a little different than what I usually do, but I hope you find it interesting all the same. Thank you again for making it to another episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm not the one